Okay, so I finally got my PDF document made up about how to properly energize the rodent coil. Um, I've done a lot of research and ideas and uh, trying different things and talked to uh, Randy and a few other people trying to get uh, the proper activation. Um, there's actually a lot of different proper activations, but I'm talking about just the torus shell itself, the one layer um, surface topology of the rodent uh, torus. So, with that uh, being said, I'm going to go into my PDF and show you everything that I've done so far. And I'm going to um, give the PDF out so people can look at it. Um, I'm going to try to explain the PDF in this video so that if you have any questions, this video might help. So this video goes along with the PDF. Uh, the PDF is actually called uh, uh, Russell Grease's Perspective on the Proper or on the Activation Sequence of the ABBA Taurus Using Electricity. I know it's a long name, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to show you um, what I found out, and uh, hopefully it helps people understand this a little better. There's a few parts in it that might be slightly uh, different than what you're used to, and if it uh, if it's wrong. Um, you know, that's just my idea on it, but it should be pretty close to the way the math really works. Alright, so here we go. Okay, so, uh, th like I said before, this PDF is called uh, Russell Grease's Perspective on the Activation Sequence of the Abitaurus Using Electricity. Um, basically, this is everything that I've uh, researched on and asked uh, people that are know the math a lot better than I do and uh, discuss their ideas and I am on the right path. So, uh, the first page just talks about me, gives me my email and YouTube on here so you can get a hold of me. Uh, this page is about uh, the way the symbol enlightenment is and uh, also um, I'm showing the Taurus skin, uh, different colors. Black is uh, negative counter draft space or uh, negative and all the colored numbers are positive. Um, this symbol gives you your nested uh, or your family number groups here. Um, it's 1 and 4, 7 is one family number group. 8, 2, and 5 is another family number group. And 6, 9, and 3 is your other family number group. Okay, here I show um, the... You can see how the uh, orange arrows here are emanating out from the center. If you were to look at this on here it would be emanating out like this from the center activating these numbers but I'm showing it on a 2D grid here instead of a 3D torus map here so it's a little easier to understand this is the whole torus map 9x9 nine nine there um, that's actually all of it uh, these are the three stages you have activation uh, stage A which is 2, 5, and 8 activation stage B which is 3, 9, and 6 Activation stage C, which is 1, 4, and 7. Those are your family number groups. Some people like to call this uh, doubling, gap space, um, halving. Some people call it doubling, doubling. Some people like to do it doubling, doubling, gap space. Uh, but I prefer the way this is because it works better when I explain it. Um, so this page here, um, basically I show the activation sequence and how it works. Um, the first stage would be uh, 2, 5, and 8, and this is just a truth table. So you here you see a 2, 5, and 8 positive, positive here, and 2, 5, and 8 uh, negative, which is green on this stage. So A lines up with A, and at the same time you have 2, 5, and 8 blue, which is uh, positive, and uh, 2, 5, and 8 green, uh, which is negative. Uh, the colors actually don't have anything to do with the positive and negative. It's just how I have them highlighted here. Um, this here is one nested vortice circuit. So if I were to take um, this right here and pull it out of there, which would be one nested vortice circuit, turn it into this here, and that's what it looks like. So that's just one solid piece. Now, I just need one chunk of it because this pattern is repeating. Uh, this is the same, this is the same, and this is the same. It's always a repeating pattern. So, this is one piece of it. That's what I have here, here, and here, here, and here, there, and there. This particular box is positive and negative in the different stages. So first you have A, which is 2, 5, and 8, 
negative or positive here, and then two, five, and eight negative. They're both on the opposite sides of your circuits. Um, I go back up here. People who know the math well know that you have doubling circuits, halving circuits, and your gap space. I didn't add that in here. You just need to look up Marco Rodin or Randy Powell, and uh, they can describe it all much better. So, uh, A would be the first stage, which is two, five, and, uh, two, eight, and five positive and negative at the same time. Now they are 180 degrees out of phase. Um, if you look here I've got, uh, I'll show you that later. Okay so the second stage would be B which is uh, 3, 9, and 6 positive here and 3, 9, and 6 negative. Uh, anytime one family number group is on the other family number groups are off altogether. They're not on at all, they're not positive, they're not negative, they're just what I'm going to call uh, floating or neutral. Um, so here I have these three stages. Uh, the C stage is seven four or one four seven, one four seven, and they are also on at the same time and they're staggered. In this box, I just basically took these all and stacked them on top of each other, so you could see the positive activation stage and the negative activation stage. Any number that is positive, it's always positive or it's just off. Any number that is a negative is either always negative or it's just off. Uh, the positives never go negative and the negatives never go positive. They're just either off, neutral, or floating, or they are not active at all. Uh, here I just wrote it out on the, uh, the Rodin hieroglyph, uh, symbol of enlightenment, so you can see the stages. Stages A, B, and C. Okay, now if we take the numbers, uh, if we take the numbers from this box here, put them together, you get positive and negative stage A. This is all stage A in this one whole box here. Okay. Now with that, you have a positive 285, 285, 285. That's your that's your pattern. This is actually one nested vortice pattern in a 9 by 9 torus. We're talking about a 9 by 9 right now. You have 5, 8, and 2 negative, 5, 8, and 2 negative, 5, 8, and 2 negative. So with that said, you can see this, if this were, uh, if the numbers were an electricity, uh, positive peaks and low negative peaks, then the blue would be following that line. Um, kind of drew that off, but if you were to start in the center, you'd go up and back down, up and back down, up and back down. Um, the next stage would be B, which is your 396. Here, this is, everything's off in this stage. Then you got C, uh, and basically you have the 1, 4s, and 7s, positive and negative. And what I've done here is created a, basically an AC waveform. The center here, right down the middle, is actually negative, or 0 volts. Okay. Anything in this blue is a positive. Positive voltage, uh, I shouldn't actually say negative here, it's actually just a 0 voltage, or floating. Okay. So it's floating or it's zero voltage. Uh, everything in the bottom, which is the green here, is actually a negative voltage. So that's how I'm comparing the numbers, turning them into what I would consider an electrical signal. I'm taking positive and negative numbers and turning them into an electrical signal. That's the first stage, second stage, third stage, or A, B, and C, I should call it. Um, basically, on the first stage, the twos five and eights um, are either positive or negative and the one fours and sevens are just floating. They're just neutral. The opposite happens in stage C. The one fours and sevens are positive or negative and the two five and eights are all floating or neutral. So these colors match up the colors here. This is a positive peak, negative peak. The positive peak is 180 degrees out of phase from the bottom peak here, which is the same coil, the same wire on the nested vortices circuit, as you can see. Okay, the next uh, page I got here is basically the same thing with uh, the wires. The doubling circuit is a wire, the gap space is nothing, no wire, and the, the halving circuit is a wire. Actually, it's having gap space doubling. That's how I've got it. Um, basically, everything's got to happen um, at different times. So if there are two wires in a gap space, you have to activate one wire, then you wait for the gap space to activate, 
then you activate the other wire, then you go back to the first wire. So there's three stages, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's stages A, B, and C, that's what I've been talking about the whole time. These stages are uh, 180 degrees out of phase if you were to look at three stages being 100, uh, if, if you look at three stages being 360 degrees. Okay. So basically, the first stage, uh, you are going to have, we're going to call L1 um, halving circuit, L2, oh, I'm sorry, L2 is halving circuit, L1 is your doubling circuit, or wire. Each one of those is a wire. Now we're talking about one nested vortices circuit. There's three on here. So this is just one nested vortices circuit on the coil. We have L1, L2, and gap space. The first stage would be activating the L1 and L2. L1 would be a positive voltage. L2 would be a negative voltage. Now, they're actually 180 degrees out of phase. So they're not actually active at the same time. They're oscillating. Then, you go to the gap space stage, B which is just nothing. Then you go to C, which is L1 and L2 again, but they are oppositely energized. Now L2 is positive and L1 is negative. Okay, and everything else is just a neutral on all three of those stages. Anything that's not positive or negative is just neutral or floating. Now this, this here is showing a sine wave or, or a, uh, you know, a sine wave. And this here is showing the exact same thing but using a square wave. Um, you can also do sawtooth wave. Um, I really think that a sine wave is what you want because things are um, constantly in and out, in and out. You want things to move and you want them to flow. So I think that a, a, a sine wave signal is really what you're looking for. Okay, this is where it gets tricky. This is where I kind of changed it up a little. Everything else that I just talked about is exactly the way Marco Rodin and Randy Powell and everybody describes it. Um, now I kind of get a little different on you. Um, since we're just looking at surface topology, there's really more to this map, so this is my way of describing it. If you look at a nested vortice circuit, which is here, here, and here, those are the three. These other ones match up with it. You can see that on my first page. Um, basically, these arrows here, they hit this six. Six and six. But if you look at them, they're staggered. They're not all the same length. They are on different nested vortices circuits. So if you look at it here, you can see my orange arrows there. One's out a little further, one's out a little further. And if you go one more, which is here, which is the next length of arrow out, you're actually on the same nested vortices circuit as you were last. So basically what with, with this, like I have it, or how the math works, six is basically, not just six, but any number, we're going with six here, is basically, 120 degrees off from these last ones. Because when you get to the next one, you're at the same nested vortices circuit. So you're back to the beginning. So again, 360 degrees, it's a full cycle, if you will, and each time that the number six is activated, you're 120 degrees out of phase. Okay, and that's, that's on different nested vortices circuits, one, two, and three. One, two, and three, okay.